Okay, here we are to talk about the iPhone pre-order and how it went today. Well, I gotta say, or should I say, um, by the time this is uploaded, it could be after midnight, who knows. Um, let's just say it was an easy process. And I, if I didn't explain it last year, I must have, if you go go to some of my videos, you'll see that um, if you're part of the upgrade program, you're pretty much guaranteed to get the phone every single year when at day one, and that's it. A lot of people think, well, um, well, you might have a chance that you miss out on it. I almost missed out on it one year because there was some incorrect payment information inside that I didn't update. That was on my fault. So I couldn't get it shipped to my house. I had to get an, um, what's it called? I had to go to the store. Now, I'm going to the store from now on, and I wanted to tell you why. This is a big thing that people have to understand, especially when purchasing an iPhone is to go to the store. Because if they trade it in at the store and for some reason it fails, usually if there's a few nicks or marks on the phone, they won't make a big deal out of it. But um, let's just say they um, it fails. Well, you have your other phone there and they could say, well, since it failed, you need to give me my other phone back. It's a little more difficult to do that if you buy it online and you send the other phone out for trade-in and it fails, what do you do? You have to pay off both balances. Suddenly you have half of an iPhone balance to pay and a whole iPhone balance to pay. It's one and a half bills to pay. Well, not really, you know what I mean. So for phones like, like say, let's say a phone's $2,000, you have to pay 1000 for it. It's all bullshit. What I think they should do is you find a better way for you to pay it off. Maybe a little longer. Make a better program. Because the problem for an iPhone upgrade program is, is there's so much that you have to do to qualify for it. Well, um, you gotta be a, you got to have a credit card, first of all. Someone's got to have a credit card that you know so you can sign up for it. You can't just waltz in and do what I do every year without a credit card. It's as simple as that. Um, I, I don't want to sway people from buying iPhones, but other than this way, there is no other way to do it. The upgrade program is the only way. You can buy them through the carriers, but you have to pay half of them off, and you pay so much every month, which isn't bad. Usually you can make it to that date, but the carrier is not going to have the stock for the phone like di from directly from Apple. If you buy from the carrier, you're going to have all kinds of problems, probably. They're not going to have much of a stock. I know every time I bought a phone I never bought it through anyone but Apple, I think. No. I always bought my phone through Apple. I never bought it through AT&T. And the reason why I didn't do that was because I just felt like it was it was kind of stupid. I felt like if I bought it through AT&T, um, they're not going to have enough phones or they're going to have limited options to which phones I can get. Not to mention how long it takes for these some of these carriers to get the phones when they come out. But right now, when I checked um, this afternoon, maybe 12, 1, no, maybe 2 o'clock, I noticed that the phones were about two weeks delayed. That's nothing. I remember when I used to look at them and they were like five or six weeks and you had to wait. But you don't have to do that anymore. Just when you go to the Apple store, you got to kind of be a little pushy. When you talk to these people, you got to make sure... You, um, you're prepared to, to argue with them a little because they were real shitty to us the last time we were there. And I can't picture what they're going to be like this time around. And the reason why I say that is is because you don't want to get screwed over, do you? Nobody likes getting screwed. I don't mean it like that. Um, you have to make sure you um, don't, don't let them push you around or whatever. I mean, they were having like three or four people help me with stuff. So the organizational skills you think of Apple would be better. They're probably great at their campus and everything. Oh, oh, California, but when it comes to the skills right here in Rhode Island, there is no, they have like a bunch of people helping you with one thing to another. Um, here's what you need to do. If you're experienced with an iPhone, basically all you have to say is, uh, wait for them to activate it, and once it's activated, that's it. Tell them, I don't want any help after that stage. That's what they did with me. The problem was they couldn't get there was an activation bug that was going around last year and I was stuck with it. And um, I couldn't activate my phone because they were too dumb. 
If you know there's an activation problem, you should have a representative from each cell phone store, um, cell phone provider at your store. The problem is um, if you're in a mall, they're not gonna send, that sometimes they only have one or two people in the store so they can't do that. Wouldn't it be nice if they could send somebody from Verizon or AT&T or T-Mobile? I had to go to AT&T to activate my phone because they were too stupid. Um, the good thing about it was, out of all the, I didn't, I didn't complete, well actually no, there wasn't anything really good about it. Um, other than I could download everything into my phone because I had an Apple ID. So, I th yeah, I think I downloaded the apps. I can't remember if I did that after that. I don't know. But they weren't willing to help us. They were okay. The, a guy that was a manager, who was a jerk kind of, when he came over too. The guy was a manager and he came over. He basically was okay with us leaving the store with the phone that wasn't activated. He didn't give a shit. I think Apple should have more expertise in this field. Like, they deal with all these cell phone providers all the time. Every big, not everyone in the store, but every big person that's activating phones, they should be required to have training with T-Mobile, Verizon, and I almost said Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T. That way, if there's an issue with your phone, they can do it themselves. They can activate it for you. I mean, hell, if they can set up the phone right inside the store, if it's your first time going to Apple and you decide you, you want to go with AT&T, Verizon, or um, say T-Mobile, they can set it up for you right there. But when there's an activation problem, they have to send you directly to these people? That doesn't make any sense to me at all. And it's just because the people aren't trained. They don't know what they're doing with the phones half the time. When you have a day one phone, there's only a handful of people in that store that know what they're doing with the telephone. The other ones go around and try to help you, but they don't know shit. Fact of the matter is. And you know what's not going to help either? Is what about all these people that have even more information on their telephones and they try to back up in the store? I'm not too bad. All I have to do is back up some apps and that's about it. I deleted all the television stuff out of my phone because if you don't it'll it'll hold it in the backup and try to back up everything and I don't want to do that um so it, it's just a, it's a lot of craziness I don't expect as big of a problem this year with the activation problems because of the eSIM electronic SIM card inside the phone no more of those cards and they did that basically because they didn't want you moving things around and stuff which you can do technically with the same cards, but you know, it's not. You can't find a broken iPhone on the ground anymore that's new, steal the SIM card and put it in your phone. You just can't do that. So I think that was one of the reasons why they did it, to avoid all people hacking into stuff. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, that um, when I was saying though, with the backups and stuff, Apple introduced, I, they didn't really introduce it in the show. I don't think they, um, they might have said it once, but very briefly. The iCloud services are going to get bigger now. Is it going to be 12 terabytes or 16 or whatever it is? That's insane. I would never buy... I don't have any cloud services anymore that I pay for. And the reason why I don't do it is because it's just more money that you give to them. Unless you really need it, why pay for it? Um, I'm going to tell you right now, that's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of space. What do you do if you... um? have to download say a t you you have a five gigabyte video that you stored from um you took on your phone that's a 4k video that you took what if you store it in iCloud and then you try to get it and then you delete it out of your phone oh now I need it on my phone again you know how long that's going to take to download five gigs of information and people don't have fast internet so I don't recommend getting these big huge cloud plans because it's going to be very difficult to deal with them. Photos are different. They're all in one area. The only reason why I stopped using the photos, I'm just going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take photos and I'm going to go up to those kiosks and I'll print them out in a booklet. I don't care if they're super sharp or anything. At least they look nice and I can go, I can do something like back in the day. Um, what else? I, could sh I extend this past 10 minutes, I guess. What else can I add to this that has any purpose? Um, I'm just going to say this, um, this phone has a little bit better feature 
when it comes to upgrading than last time, but people are right. I mean, I'm not gonna lie about it like other fanboys do. Or I'm not even really a fanboy. I don't talk about Apple that much on here. Um, all I'm gonna say is you got the action button, you got the chip. Another thing I don't like is they're comparing um, an iPhone chip to like an i9, like a single thread i9 on a computer, which is a stupid comparison because they don't do the same things. And I would love for Apple to come up with an app or something we could do with this phone that would take all the energy out of it and it would show you how powerful it is. There's really nothing out there that I can think of. What can I do with the phone that will tax it the most? You could use iMovie and do a lot of crazy things in it, but there's not much you can do. I want something that can totally, you know, take the resources of the phone and put it to the test. I mean, isn't that the point? What good is all this RAM or processor if you can't do anything else? That's how I feel about it, but Apple feels the way it does, that they're going to, um, the people are right about it. I feel bad that some of the, um, uh, uh, not some of them, all the base model iPhones got the original USB-C's, so, when I'm not original, the lowest speeded ones, and, and you know, I think that's a shit in the face. I think everyone that has an iPhone should have got that. I mean, you pay enough money for these things every month. I understand you're not paying Apple, but still, you should have been able to get the high speed USB-C ports, but that's just reserved for the pro model kind of stuff. To tell you the truth, if you don't get the pro model, I feel like you're getting screwed now. You're missing out on like every big feature that Apple offers. It's not right. I mean, the smaller iPhone should have something on them that's worthwhile. And um, that's all I have to say about it. So if you didn't get it by now, then that's that. You don't have to worry about getting cases. You can just get them after you um, you watch the show and um, the whatever it is, the live event. All right, well... That's it. I don't know what else to say. I've been doing this for a long time. This has been a huge process. And if Apple wants to, Apple can say what, um, not Apple, the people at Apple can say what they want, the people that talk about it, but that's that. Some people complained, complained about what was called um, the foldable phone. I don't want a foldable phone ever. I don't care how good it is. I don't want a phone that I know if I unfold too many times, it's probably going to break or something. Um, I know somebody had a foldable phone and that's exactly what happened. You should see what their screen protector looks like now. Everything's falling apart on it because it's not made for it. There's really no screen screen protector that you can put on a foldable phone. It has to be bendable plastic and stuff like that. Alright, well, that's it. Bye-bye.